My name is Steve Pollock. I've been in the wine industry over 31 years. I've tasted wines from all over the world. And I can honestly say that my passion for this craft continues to grow every day. Come along for the ride as I meet the winemakers, sample the industry, and build a premium new wine label called Moon Tree. Let's have a glass together. Hey, Steve here. Uh, welcome to my car. I'm taking a little day trip today. I'm going to take you over to Vito's Wine Cellar, believe it or not, in Jenkins Township, Pennsylvania, about two miles from my house. It's kind of miserable out today, but I want to stop in and see what, uh, what Vito's doing. So we're making our way there now, and uh, we'll be in touch when we get in front of the building. All right, let's go. Let's go see what he's doing. Hey, Vito. Hey, there he is. How are you? Please come on. Nice seeing you. See you. Nice it's been you. a while. Oh, it's been a couple years. What? Three years almost. Three years. Yeah, please. You know, tell us a little bit about what this, how this hall worked out, because this is your tasting room here, right? This used to be a reception hall for St. Joseph's Church. We basically redid everything from the floor, the painting, everything. The last addition was uh, the pizza oven imported from Italy and assembled by a company located in New York State. It was uh, assembled here piece by piece. The most wow. interesting part was the, the tiling. It I took bet. them about two days. It actually looks like a ceramic. Yeah. I've never seen a pizza oven that big. It, it really jumps at you and it, it's a real beautiful touch. This was, it, was added on. So we have been here almost 10, well, actually 10 years. And five years ago, we put this addition in where we make our wine here. Yeah, there it is. You know, with him, he's been doing it for so long, I would expect nothing less. It's his recipe, and I'm gonna tell you, I have not tasted a bad wine from this man. Yeah, let's try the Sauvignon Blanc. Now, you said this is Washington State, right? Yes. Ooh, smells like Sauvignon Blanc. Boy, it's got yeah. beautiful citrus, got some white yeah. peach. You know, it's got that, that white floral note, and when I say white flowers, think of maybe hibiscus. It's got this, it's very aromatic. Uh, the, the acid's impeccable. I mean, with, with Sauvignon Blanc, if you don't have acid, you have a clumsy wine. Wow, it's really, really nice. One of the favorites, yeah. Yeah, it's really yeah. good. The so next, let's move on to the Chard. The next one is the Chardonnay. It was just uh, bottled. We just finished, what, about five days ago. You get a lot of pineapple here, a lot of green apple, ripe green apple, yellow apple. Now the next one is uh, Pinot That's Grigio. Perfect. Yeah, let's try that. White spice. This is also two years old, this one here, yeah. It's got this 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 lineal this lineal peach nectarine thing that goes right down your the center of your palate. Much more much riper than your basic Pinot Grigio in your supermarket or or, or oh, the jugs. I, I mean, this is serious. This reminds me of a of a of a real nice Pinot Grey. Uh, really really good. Steve, I really don't know uh, if I got a gift here making wine. But I have people that once they taste this wine here, says, I'm not going to buy anything I don't, from the liquor store. I don't disagree. I mean, these wines are very, uh, very smooth. They really are. I'm blown away. Okay, so the next one, it's Riesling. It's really, really nice. It's, it's very balanced. You know, what's tricky with Riesling is if you don't have the right acid in a sweet wine and the alcohol is too big, after the second or third sip, you're done with it because it's saturating your palate and it's just like nectar. It's too heavy. What's nice about this, it's gone. So now it's gone, I'm ready for another sip. I get little spritz of some maybe white spice on the back of this, uh, but really, really impeccable. I mean, really, really good. The last one, Steve. It's uh, Vito Secco. The story behind this is that I was selling white grapes to a, a local winemaker. He came, he looks at the grapes, he says, oh, I don't like them. They were said too oxidized. Okay. okay, fine. I used all the four ingredients to make my own Vito Secco, Vito's Dolce. 
And you won't believe the compliments on Okay, the good. Let me try it. It's got a nice, got a nice honey color. Oh, that's that's pretty unique. This is a little honey, little uh, boy, orange marmalade. I don't know this butter. It's like a buttered. Uh, I get I get kind of a buttered apple on the on the on the nose uh, of, of this wine. N nothing nothing compared to this. We're going real complex. I mean, you, you know, if you drink if you drink wine, you really appreciate stuff like this because it. You know, it actually helps your olfactory bulb where, where you where you sense all this stuff. This is a wine that makes me think a little more, which I like. Well, what I liked about the wines that, that he picked, I mean, he's not trying to make these wines into something they're not. He doesn't overuse oak. The wines are clean. The wines are balanced. The wines are very, very food friendly. You know, he comes from an Italian background where wine is made as food. So you go over there, the wine's got opulent fruit, they got great acid, they got perfect balance, uh, and, and that, that's what makes a real good wine. All right, let's finish up, uh, Vito. I really trust your expertise. I worked with a winery and, and an importer uh, from California who has family roots in Italy, uh, as you do, uh, and they were gracious enough to put a Moscato di Asti together for our Moon Tree brand. This is a mocked up label, not finished, nothing on the back. They just sent this, and I want to taste with Vito. So. Here we go. It's not in yet. It'll be in. He comes from the Asti region in Italy where this wine is actually sourced. So as fate has it, he lands a mile or two from my house and I have the opportunity to sample with a veteran like him to get his taste profile on something we put together. It's very good. It's good. It's very good, yes. It's got enough acid. It's got that creamsicle, peachy thing going on. I just wanted to save the one sample I had to try with Vito Thank Bolivia. you very much. Hey, salute. This is very good. Thank you. Chin, chin. Salute. This is why this is so important to do these events that I'm doing right now, to showcase guys like this that, that, that really epitomize what I'm fighting for, to get back to putting what's, you know, putting what's in the bottle first, not what's on the bottle first, like most of the mass marketing things do. Five companies own 98% of what's on your shelves. Different labels, but they all buy them and they're all made, they're all, a lot of them are processed. These are made by hand. These, that room we just seen, these are all made by hand, by this gentleman right here. And there is another thing, when people uh, drink these wines, uh, somehow they are a little bit hesitant. Will I get my stomach upset? Will I get headaches? The way I handle this, even the malolactic fermentation yeah. done with certain bacteria, you will not get headache, you will not get upset stomach. It's natural. Course, if it's you made drink natural. a lot, you will. Yeah, well, let's be totally honest. If you're buying more than a fifth, if you're buying a bigger size than, a, than this bottle, you have added sulfites. There is a guarantee. Most of the mass market is stuff, the top 100 brands that are selling out there right now, they're chemical bombs in my opinion. It's, uh, I always cut down to at least one fourth of what they recommend. Yeah. Hey, Vito. Thank you. Thank you. Steve. So salute. Thank you very much.